Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes, and welcome to an introduction to the Akai EWI 5000 electronic wind instrument. That funky Hammond organ jazz solo you heard at the start of this clip was a little tune I called Mr. Hammond Meets the EWI. The organ sounds you heard were actually played by me on this electronic wind instrument using one of the many simulated sounds that are built into this instrument. Now as a multi-instrumentalist I'm very familiar with the fingerings and the way to play the flutes and the clarinets and the saxophones but I don't have any real finger dexterity or technique on the piano or organ. It's not one of the instruments that I regard that I play and I certainly don't teach keyboards. As you would have heard in that jazz improvisation, whoever was playing the organ had quite advanced finger technique on the Hammond organ. But in fact, it's an illusion. That was me using saxophone fingerings on this instrument and just soloing as if I was soloing on the tenor saxophone over a, a backing. Today I'll take you through some of the basic features of the Akai EWI 5000. Let's start by having a look at the instrument itself, the body of the instrument. So on a casual glance, certainly from a distance, it looks a bit like a clarinet. It's black in colour. It's a straight instrument, like a clarinet or I guess a soprano saxophone. But the keys on the front of the instrument gives the illusion that it is a clarinet. Now, the first thing is it's made out of hard plastic. There's no wood. It's not a metal instrument or a wooden instrument. It's basically toughened plastic. And it's a reasonably light instrument, I guess about the weight of a clarinet. Akai has wisely included a strap hook here, the same as you'd find on all of the saxophones and if you think of a straight soprano sax, you would never play a straight soprano sax for any period of time without connecting it to a neck strap. And certainly when I play the EWI, I'm always careful to ensure I have a neck strap on and I connect this instrument to a saxophone neck strap so my neck is taking the weight of the instrument and my fingers then can move freely without trying to hold the instrument up. If we take a close look at the keys, now you'll notice there are no holes drilled into the body of the instrument. Whilst this looks like a clarinet, there's no air escaping out of any of those keys. In fact, there's no moving parts whatsoever on the front of this instrument. What you're hearing there is just the skin of my fingers hitting those metal keys. There's no key, there's no vertical movement up or down of the key. And that's one of the amazing things I think about this particular instrument, this design. It's unique and you would expect that that would be prone to technical hitches. But if you go back and listen to that opening track where I was playing the organ simulation, I had absolutely no problem thinking of this as if I was playing a saxophone. And, you know, it was picking up my rapid finger movements just as accurately as I would be able to get on any acoustic instrument. So that's the first thing that you'll notice if you try one of these instruments is it's quite unusual for a while to not have any moving parts on the instrument, not on the front of the instrument where your fingers are. Now, if we turn to the back of the instrument, there are some moving parts and noticeably right here, which is the equivalent of the octave key area or the register key on the clarinet. Octave key on the saxophones, register key on the clarinets. I'll just bring this in closer. You can see there's a series of rollers. Now, all of the rollers are perfectly smooth except for these two here, which you'll notice have quite a rough sort of engraving on them. That's deliberate because that's your default position for your thumb. That's the default octave key position where you can feel the roughness on the two rollers. Now, unlike a saxophone or clarinet where you can only push the octave key or register key in or out, on or off, the EWI lets you go through multiple octaves. In other words, that's your standard octave. If you 
bring your thumb down, that's taken it, the note down an octave. Bring it down again, that's taken it down another octave. So two octaves down, if we go the other direction, one octave higher, two octaves higher, three octaves higher, four octaves higher. So that's the first thing that will just blow your mind as a wind instrument player, is the range of this instrument. Because it's electronic and it's based on MIDI samples and driving MIDI devices, you have to be careful where you play. It's no good, you know, selecting a tuba sample and deciding you're going to play it, you know, in the seventh octave above the normal range of the tuba. You're going to get a very strange sound if you do that. But some of the more electronic sounds, some of the sounds that are not trying to simulate acoustic instruments, actually do sound great across the entire multi-octave range. So that's the moving parts on the EWI 5000, the octave mechanism. As far as blowing into the instrument is concerned, it has a soft rubberized mouthpiece about the width of a tenor saxophone mouthpiece. You'll see the opening there at the end is a rectangular slit cut into the end of that mouthpiece and that slit is about the same width as a tenor saxophone reed. So when we blow into the instrument we hear no sound because it's totally electronic but you will hear a little bit of the sound of air rushing out of this hole here. So there is a tube that runs right through this instrument from the mouthpiece down to this opening here. That's the escape valve for the air and it's also where any condensation that may form in the instrument will escape. Or if you, dare I say, if you spit into the instrument, if you get excited with a lot of tonguing, that serves like on a trumpet and a trombone. That's a dual purpose spit valve and also it's the escape route for the air that you're blowing into the instrument. Now inside the instrument there are various electronic sensors to detect how fast or slow you are moving air through the instrument and just like on an acoustic instrument that corresponds to how loud or soft the dynamics will be coming out of the EWI. Now just a couple of final features to show you in this introductory tutorial. The right hand thumb plate, as you can see there there's a shiny area, that's where your right hand thumb rests when you're playing the instrument. And at either end of that plate, there are some receptors that can pick up. If you glide your thumb up towards the top receptor, that will allow pitch bend up. And there are parameters that you can set how far that pitch bend will go. The default is roughly something like a semitone. And the opposite occurs, that if you glide your thumb down the other direction and engage with the sensors at either end, that will drop the pitch down to a predetermined parameter. A very useful musical tool. You can just do some really nice natural sounding bends and it's an easy way to do it. Just the gliding of your thumb over that shiny metal plate. And just finally, connectivity wise, you'll see at the end of the EWI there's a USB connector and there's also a standard 6.5 guitar lead style output jack. So you can just plug in a standard guitar lead into that output and connect that into a PA mixer or a guitar amplifier. We've already talked about the MIDI connectivity which we can go through a standard MIDI lead here. But the instrument is sold as a fully wireless enabled instrument and my preferred way to connect to this instrument is wirelessly. So this device is the wireless receptor. It's got stereo outputs there which you can plug into again a PA mixing desk. On the other side you've got a USB connector. And I just play this instrument linked up to this wireless receptor and certainly in a reasonable distance within the, the studio or if you were performing live, you've got the ability to walk around when you're performing, no leads connected whatsoever to the device and high quality output being picked up by the wireless connector device. Okay, as you can see I now have my neck strap on so the EWI is firmly and securely connected with the weight around my neck. I have it wirelessly connected into my recording software and I'll just demonstrate a couple of those features that we talked about. So firstly I'll just play a, a riff 
using standard saxophone fingerings here. <laughs> Okay, now if I play that same riff and you'll notice I've got my thumb on the default octave key there where the two embossed rollers are. If I now play those same notes but roll my finger down to the next, my thumb to the next octave down, we'll take that riff down an octave. Well, let's take it down one more octave. I mean, that's an interesting feature to be able to drop down two octaves. Let's go in the other direction. We'll take it up one octave higher. Okay, let's take it another octave higher than that. Now, for you high note trumpet players, we'll take it up one more octave. And for you absolute screaming trumpet fans, we'll take it up the final octave. So that one is for all of the dog lovers out there. That's just an example of range-wise, you know, the phenomenal ability on a wind-driven instrument to cover the range of the grand piano, full seven octaves. I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the Akai EWI 5000. It's one of the relatively low cost options now available to musicians who want to explore electronic wind instruments. As always, keep in touch via my website. That's www.brianhayes.biz, B-I-Z, Z for Zorro. Drop me an email if you have any questions about EWIs. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with all of the latest videos that I produce for the many instruments that I play and teach. I'll close this tutorial out now with another example of me playing the EWI 5000 using the Hammond organ sound. This is from a track I composed and recorded called Ain't Got Nothing. I'm playing all of the saxophones, some of the guitars, the pedal steel guitar, and also the EWI in the mix in this natural acoustic sounding setting. And that's what I really love using this instrument for, as a wind instrument player to be able to play with the musical inflections that I hear in my mind, but with sounds that I can't produce on acoustic wind instruments. Bye for now. Thank you.